Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. I am so excited for episode two of Boost My Build this month. We've got so many great submissions. We're gonna tear apart your PC part picker list like we always do and put them back together and significantly boost up your performance. Now, there's gonna be a couple of spicy ones in this one and maybe controversial. I'm really excited to see what you say down in the comments. And of course, remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like, it really helps out the channel. Subscribe and click the bell icon, that way you get notified when we go live. With that, let's jump into it. All right, Louis Marte, they're a first time PC builder, they've done a stream amount of research and they're very unsure about the build. Every first time PC builder goes through that and frankly, every returning builder goes through that too. They know they can do some things better, $2,000 USD is, a, is the budget. They love gaming, but they do a lot of editing for their friend's YouTube channel. Okay, see what you got. We're at 2,155, so you're already over budget. You're $155 over budget. And we've got a Ryzen 5600X, Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360. That's a big cooler for that 5600X. We've got the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite V2. Uh, the V2 uh, has the front panel USB Type-C header, and I see that we've got a case that has that. That's the Pure Base 500DX, great case. Very expensive though, in my opinion. And we've got 16 gigs of DDR4 3600CL16, and then an Adlink S70. What, for $235? What is this thing? What is it, do your laundry for you too? It's just a Gen 3 SSD. No, this thing's, whoa, this thing's going away. I don't know where we got that thing. I'm sure there's a story behind it because it's, you've actually manually inputted the price here, and I can see if I go to Amazon, it's actually in stock for $109. A little confused about that, but we're gonna get rid of that. And then your power supply. I don't know, maybe it's out of stock or whatnot, but $122 for 650 watt power supply, that's about twice the price you should be paying. So we'll get that fixed too. Now, there's two ways to go here with this video editing rig, given your budget. You're already $155 over budget. And I now actually wanna boost your performance up a little bit. I think that we can do that in a couple of ways. I mean, you did get the RTX 3060 Ti for $1,000. That's good for video editing. Um, the NVENC encoder is gonna do a lot of heavy lifting there. We can either try and get you a 5800X. I don't really think you need it though. I think the 5600X is more than robust for, I mean, I edit YouTube videos sometimes on my Ryzen 3600, shh, don't tell anybody. But I would like to get you some more memory because Adobe Premiere, if that's what you're gonna end up using, can be a real memory hog. I mean, on my machine, I have 32 gigs of memory and I find that thing will eat up to like 30, uh, uh, 24 gigs at a time just for Adobe Premiere. So let's do this. Let's edit the part list. Gonna stay with this. The CPU cooler, this is massive overkill. So let's just go ahead and uh, reduce this price down. Now we could go with an air cooler. It seems if you wanna go with a liquid cooler, I would recommend the uh, just the id cooling for $80. There we go, that's saving us 40 bucks right there, is that right? Yeah, that's saving us 40 bucks. And that cooler is more than enough for Ryzen 5 5600X. Motherboard, I like the motherboard, but I would prefer if we get the B550 Pro version. The reason is for, uh, for audio, it has an ALC1220 audio codec, which means it has support for high impedance headphones. And honestly, I would be willing to give up your front panel USB type C, but we don't have to because it's right here, $10 more, no big deal. Let's get that. Great, um, what's next? Memory, let's go ahead. We can get you black RGB memory if you want. I really do like this silicon power kit that, uh, that we got for the 5600G build. And now you've got 32 gigs of memory and this kit's running at 3200CL16. Let's fix your storage. The big challenge with storage right now, and I don't know if this has to do with the chip shortage or whatnot, is that drives are, they're simply, two terabyte drives are simply weirdly priced right now. They are just too expensive. It's actually cheaper to get two one terabyte drives than it is uh, a two terabyte drive if you're gonna get a higher performance drive. The lower budget and NVMEs, it's still the case that I think you, you get a cost savings there. Kingston A2000, one terabyte drives. These are good prosumer level drives for video editing. Uh, what are we at? We're at 2100, we need to lose $100. Well, I can lose 60 of it here on the power supply, I'm pretty confident. So you want 650 watts about where you want. You, you did that right. Um, in fact, it looks like we could get away with 600 watts right now. The MAG MPG, this is the, the same power supply we just used in our build this weekend. It's, I believe, on the A tier on the Linus Tech Tips uh, PSU Cultus list. It's the MSI MPG. And if, if you do get the little side window for the PSU shroud, then the Dragon looks really awesome. So we got that for 70 bucks. We saved you about $55 there. 
So we're about $47 over budget at this point. So we can make a decision. I, we could take a look at cranking the case down a little bit. We could go to an air cooler for 59, like the Scythe Puma 2. I would recommend that at this point, we just go ahead and go for $2,047 and call it a day. I'll let you make those kind of final decisions to, to squeeze in that last 20 or 30 bucks. This is gonna get you uh, double the amount of memory that you had for your uh, heavy video editing. It's gonna give you better signal to noise uh, in terms of the audio codec on the, on the motherboard. We right-sized your power supply and we gave you two terabytes of pretty fast prosumer level PCIe Gen 3 storage. So your build is boosted. All right, we got Isaac Dubik. Isaac is primarily gonna use this for streaming and some gaming, maybe even a little programming and coding for games. They own the GPU and the PSU. Their budget's around a thousand bucks, so we gotta put everything else together for a thousand bucks, but they prefer if we could cut it down to $800 for the rest of the parts. All right, I, I love budget challenges. Let's see what you got here. You got a 5800X. Okay, 240 all-in-one liquid cooler, one of the ones I've recommended. You got a B550 Pro VDH Wi-Fi, which is a motherboard that I'm not a big fan of. It, to me, it looks like it came from Radio Shack. If you're younger than me, probably don't know what that means. It's not a compliment though. Mostly, I don't like the audio on it. Uh, I don't like the rear, uh, the rear connectivity on it isn't fantastic. It's only got four uh, faster uh, Gen 3 ports and two USB type two, 16 gigabytes DDR4 3200CL16 with a 3060 Ti, that is absolutely appropriate. We've got a super fast NVMe uh, expensive one that we could save some money on, I see right there. We've got a Corsair 4000D airflow case, but I don't see any additional fans, by the way. You need more fans for that case. I know everyone really likes this case, it's airflow. But it only comes with two fans. You gotta you gotta populate it with some fans in there. And then we're buying a Windows license. That's like 10% of our budget. Okay, this one might be a little controversial for some folks because I'm actually gonna do something that is technically gonna reduce your CPU performance, but I think give you an overall better gaming experience. What am I doing here? I've downgraded your CPU from 5800X to the 5600X and you saved roughly about $100. Now, right now the price in here for, for this is $309. That's just because it's saying it's out of stock everywhere. I wouldn't expect the 5600X to actually sell for $309. I would hold out until Black Friday and buy it. You'll probably be able to buy it at a discount. I've changed out your CPU cooler just to one that with ARGB, that's the id cooling zoom flow 240X. It's the same price right now as that older Cooler Master cooler. And to me, this is a better pump. This is a better assembly. And it's just, it looks better too. It's just beautiful RGB on it. Uh, that's the id cooling zoom flow. That's the black one. Again, right now, $80. This is something that you could check out, especially on Amazon around Black Friday, to see if they're gonna significantly discount it. Now, here's where I've actually taken some of your money and invested it into better audio and just an overall better motherboard. Look, the motherboard you had is fine. It's okay, absolutely. Would it work? Sure. But does it have great audio on there that you're gonna want when you're gaming? No, now if you have like an external DAC or a, a, a external receiver you're plugging into using a digital receiver instead, maybe maybe stay with a 5800X and that cheapy motherboard, it would be just fine. But instead I've gone with the MSI B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. This is a cracking good motherboard. It does have the front panel USB Type-C header right here for your Corsair 4000D case, so you can plug in the front panel USB Type-C and it's got a significantly improved audio section as well as just overall better VRMs. So at some point, if you do wanna put like maybe in four or five years, you wanna buy a used 5950X or something on it, I'd feel much more comfortable with you putting it on this board than the other board. The other board probably could be a pass, but again, not, not my favorite board. In terms of overall features though, this is the superior board. And then of course, I've switched out your storage. You had a much more expensive $140 Gen 3 SSD. You can get just about all that performance out of the Kingston A2000 for $90 instead. If you do want to spend that much on a SATA SSD, I'd look at some of the Gen 4, uh, the cheaper Gen 4 drives are now down around $130. I would not buy a Gen 3 drive for more than 130 bucks. I would just go Gen 4. But Gen 4 is not necessarily gonna help you. You really need to know why you're buying that Gen 4 drive, otherwise, literally, you're just burning the money. Well, let's talk about a couple of other revisions I made. I did add two case fans in here. I added two all-black Arctic P12 PST fans. 
I really like these fans because you can daisy chain them. You can see this connector here on the end of it. It's got a little daisy chain on it. So you can plug the next fan into it and just tie up the, the loose slack. Now you could get three of these. I know the Corsair 4000D does come with two all black fans. It comes with one here in the front and one in the rear. What I'm suggesting is you take these two Arctic fans and you put them in along with the Corsair fan in there. And there you go. And you've got plenty of airflow now in that case. Case is great, but it does need some fans in my opinion. Let's talk about the Windows license because we are at $953. We came down $20. Again, we've moved your performance from the CPU over into the audio and some of the features on the motherboard. If you don't want to go that route, I certainly understand. But one area you could cut cost is the Windows license. There's no reason that you absolutely have to buy a Windows license for $109. You can get through a key reseller, but you could see a, quite a bit of cost savings there as well. So overall, again, I'm sure this one's going to be controversial. Tell me down in the comments if you think, if you hate what I've done with this build. I just think I'm focused on the overall gaming experience and not just the raw horsepower in the CPU. I want you to have a better experience. So hopefully you feel like your build is boosted. Okay, we've got Sophia Gohar. Sophia says, first PC, great. They're scared they're missing something uh, or it's incompatible. Yeah, uh, of course, every first time builder is. Uh, they wanna do high FPS, 1080p gaming, some competitive gaming, some AAA titles. Uh, their budget is $1,700. They could go to $1,900 though. They've fallen in love with this beautiful white case, they said, that looks expensive. Uh, they want their motherboard to have Wi-Fi, and they're unsure of two key things that a lot of people are unsure of. Do you need an audio card, and what do you need to do about a Windows license? So let's take a look at what they've got. I like how the build is starting off. Let's see, the total price here is $1,860, so we're about $40 below budget right now, so let, let's see if we can boost this up a little bit. We've got an i5-11400. Good start. We've got a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black. Good budget cooler. I like the ASRock B560M Pro 4 AC. That's a good B560 that has your Wi-Fi on it. You have 16, I'm sorry, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 CL18. I don't think we need this much memory, especially given the cost and that you wanna come down in terms of price. Then we've got some confusing stuff here. You've got the Team Vulcan one terabyte uh, SATA SSD, which is a great SATA SSD, but not for a new build. I would use that for an existing build. And then we've got um, just traditional two terabytes of hard drive uh, storage space. You've got a 3060 Ti that you say you've got for $650, great. Here's the case you've fallen in love with. You say it's the pure base. Uh, 500DX ATX case. Look, it's a great looking case. I think it, it's an amazing, but it is expensive. It's about $100. And if we're trying to keep things low, that's just something we need to think about. It doesn't actually give us more performance necessarily. Then we've got the perfectly acceptable power supply. Although it's 700 watts, that's a lot of power for this build. We'll, we'll jump into that in a second. You're gonna go with the MSI Optics. This, this is a fine 1080p monitor. And then you've got a, a keyboard in here that I assume that you really like. Here's where we're going with this thing. Uh, we're gonna end up just at, at your $1,700 budget, which is exactly where you wanted to be. And we've boosted a, a couple of areas here that I think you're, are gonna just improve the quality of life of the build. Let's take a look at them. We stuck with the i5-11400. The i5-11400 is out of stock a lot, and so the price should be more like 170, 180, but unfortunately it's like more like 220. You could drop down to the 10400 to save some money, but you would use, you'd lose the PCIe Gen 4. So I opted just to stick with that, and with that, that's fine. We stuck with your cooler, we stuck with the motherboard, but I did come down in terms of the overall amount of memory that you have. So we just went with a two by eight gigabyte kit instead of the 32 gigabyte kit that you had. We saved about $100 actually doing that. The other thing that I saw in your build that just was really just a kind of a question mark was that SATA SSD. Again, I know that's a SATA SSD that I've recommended, but I've recommended that for builds that are upgrading from just a hard drive or they don't have an M.2 slot. So I would recommend going with an M.2. I was able to get the Crucial P2 here one terabyte for only $84, only a couple dollars more than you were gonna pay for that SATA SSD. And I think you're gonna find it is a, it's gonna be a noticeable upgrade when you're moving files around. I, I, I was really hemming and hawing about what to do about the case. You convinced me, you love this case, we're gonna stick with it, uh, I'll get you what you want here. But I did wanna address the sound card. I got rid of the sound card, you won't see it on here. Why is that? That's because Modern motherboards, at least I can I cannot think of a single modern motherboard that does not come with onboard audio. Most motherboards, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the audio SOC, and it just stands for Solution on a Chip. 
So you'll see uh, typically the audio chip here or here, and you'll see the capacitors with it. And you'll see the, uh, the outputs in the back for, you got all of your analog uh, audio ports. And on the more expensive, you'll have uh, you know, five of these and uh, as well as an optical out as well. That's the audio. Let's talk about Windows licenses. Well, in terms of the Windows license, you definitely, you don't have to buy it from Microsoft. That is the fully quote unquote legitimate way, but you certainly can get keys from a key reseller for about 15 to $20. Now in this case, I've just opted to stay with your Windows solution here. I did switch out your monitor with the AOC 24 G2. This is just an overall better panel than the one that you were looking at and it's the exact same price. So I don't know why you wouldn't just go with a better panel. This is one that's recommended by everybody. I'm not gonna go through all the specs now. I do mention it in my best gaming monitors 2021 video. I'll leave a link to that up there in the card. You can find out more about that particular monitor if you'd like. And then in terms of the power supply, I just wanted to show you, you don't need 700 watts. Again, we are under 400 watts here. We could get away with a 600 watt power supply. That being said, I decided to leave it in the build because you're only, you're only paying 60 bucks for it. So, and it's, I believe it's a C or a B on the Linus Tech Tips PSU cultist list. So it's absolutely fine to use. And you know, there's nothing wrong with having a little too much power and 60 bucks is about what you would spend right now. You probably could save 10 or $15, but I mean, we don't have to shave every last nickel off. We're already at your budget of $1,703. So there you go, your build is boosted. Christoph Bertrand, they're looking to boost their PC. They've got a budget of $1,000 Canadian. I believe that's about $750 USD. They got a Gigabyte RX 5700 XT last Black Friday. Well, you were smart to pick one up at that time. All of your other parts they feel like are out of date. They lag, FPS drops in their games. Since Black Friday is coming, would I recommend waiting before upgrading? Uh, let's take a look at what you've got. Okay, this is your current PC and you own all this stuff. So we'll just ignore the dollar total at the bottom. You've got a Ryzen 5, 1600 and that's not even the AF version that's the older AE version that's the 14 nanometer yeah I can see why you might be having some frame drops B350 that you got the gaming pro it's a micro ATX motherboard that you have um, kind of a nice one but again it's a B350 then you've got uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 CL15 but that memory is super slow then we've got a traditional two terabyte hard drive a hybrid drive actually I should say and a Samsung 860 Evo great drive wouldn't buy one new though um, they're kind of past their day and they're too too expensive now you've got the gigabyte RX 5700 XT again good pickup before the whole market collapse you must just like you must have really you know, looked at the crystal ball there. Then we've got the Cooler Master Master Case H500. This is a great case, by the way. I really like this case. We've got a 750 watt uh, power supply that I actually am not that familiar with. Then you've got your Windows license, obviously, and you've got two different monitors. You've got, both of them are uh, 1080. It looks like you've got one high refresh rate, one maybe a 60 hertz monitor. Okay, so here's your challenge. You're getting frame drops. You can't really get a new graphics card. And if you did get a graphic new graphics card, it probably wouldn't even solve your problem. The problem is more than likely the Ryzen 5 1600 and that slow ass memory that you got. Here's what I would do. Now I did take a look at building you a Ryzen system. Uh, and of course I'm using Canadian. I'm using the, the Canadian market up here, but the Ryzen 5600X, which is really the only processor that you'd consider given the availability of like the 3600 and everything else, is way overpriced, I, I thought, compared to the 11400. You have a hard budget, and I don't want you to have to spend a nickel more than you need to, because we're just upgrading your CPU. So we're gonna go with the i5 11400. We're gonna add to that the Be, Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim 2 CPU cooler. It's a great CPU cooler. It's one of the ones that I named in my recent uh, best coolers, but it's just, a, it's just a three or four heat pipe, kind of uh, medium tower cooler, and it's gonna do the job for the i5. Then we've got the ASUS Tough Gaming B560M Plus Wi-Fi. This is probably the best in terms of overall features uh, B560 board out there. This is one of the ones that was tested in terms of the power limits. It You don't even have to unlock the power limits. It just will run it at full power right out of the box. Overall, really, really great motherboard for you. To that we added, and I saw you had red memory, so I got you another kit of red memories. 
costs about 10 bucks more to get red, but it's uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 CL16, perfect for this system. Intel is not as memory sensitive as Ryzen. You could certainly go with a 3600 CL18 or CL16 kit here, uh, it would be fine because on the B560 motherboards, remember, we can overclock the memory. I didn't do anything to your storage. Your storage is fine. That There's nothing that needs to be changed uh, in terms of the 860 Evo. That SATA SSD just for gaming is gonna get you through just fine. And honestly, I didn't change anything else in terms of this build because I figured for $564, we've done our job. That 5700 XT should run much, much better with this system. It's gonna be way more stable. You're gonna get way more frames out of it. I think you're gonna have an overall much better experience. So your build is boosted. Thank you for joining us on this month's Boost My Build. Remember, give it a like if you got value out of the video. And of course, subscribe and click the bell icon. And if you wanna watch more Boost My Build, if you're not done, I'm gonna put another one right here. I'm gonna put a link to the whole playlist. Check it out. Spend the next five hours watching Boost My Build. You know you want to. And with that, we will catch you on the next one.